our SaaS club, we're going to install everything we need uh, on a Windows computer. And so if we look at the schedule, we have a video, one of the first, I think, five videos uh, back in 2020 was about how to do um, all your setup uh, windows. But this video over here um, is actually a little bit over three hours long. It's like three hours, 11 minutes. Um, so we need a shorter video for it. And since uh, Stephanie Page got her computer reimage, um, so wiped out clean, it's a perfect opportunity to use her computer um, to showcase all of this stuff. Now, these are the notes from back then. A lot of, um, there's a few things that are updated and we have some of this information now on the team website. Um, um, so the first thing we, since we did the, the setup for Mac last week, um, the first thing we really need is a, is a text editor that uh, is a bit more programming friendly. So there's um, one called Notepad++. It's already, it's highly downloaded. Um, um, and so we'll, we'll install the software first. Um, uh, okay. It's all really big. Uh, I don't want to download an ad. <laughs> uh, okay. So, hmm? yeah, on Zoom. Yeah. so I'm installing it on a different window, um, which is, says like, hey, do you want to install it? We're going to install it in English. Um, and then it says like, welcome to the setup. Let's just click next. I agree. We're going to install it in the default location with all the default settings. Um, cool. um, so once finished running it, now we have um, a text editor that um, is a little, bit, a little bit more programming friendly. In particular, we can see that uh, we can see the the lines um, and a few other things. So once we have that installed, um, let's um, let's install a few other things. So um, sorry, I'm looking at um, my little cheat sheet over here. So. Um, we have R installed, sorry, um, Notepad++ installed. Um, the next thing we can install is, um, uh, there's a few ways of accessing the cluster um, um, on a terminal window. Uh, one of them is using a software called uh, 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 Putty. Um, another one is using, um, for example, the, um, a terminal that we can install when we install uh, Git on Windows. So, um, um, the two of them, the difference between them uh, is whether you want to use Notepad++ to actually be coding things, or you want to be using, I guess, uh, RStudio to be sending your code to the terminal. Since we're also going to be using RStudio, Let's um, install that one. So there's a Git for Windows website, um, which uh, was actually the third link from these notes. Um, um, and so we're going to download it. Takes a few seconds to download. And now we can install it. And so we get this wind over here that says like, hey, you're installing Git. Is that okay? I'll say yes, we want to install it in that location. Um, uh, um, uh, 
There's a few new settings, which I'm unfamiliar with. Um, um, so I'm going to ignore them for now. And I still get now. Um, uh, here we can choose like what is the default editor we want to use for a Git. We're going to choose Notepad plus plus since we already installed it. Um, um, now um, there's a few things here where it's like, hey, do you want to you have what is the name of your default branch that you want to have uh, when you make a new Git repository? We're going to overwrite it with the word "bevel." That's a word that is used on Bioconductor packages in general um, instead of main. The original one for Git was master, but people are moving away from that word because of its um, you know, implications with slavery. Um, so we're going to use "bevel." Now, here, this is where it gets a bit complicated. There's a few options. And so one of the links from back then, uh, the fourth link over here, uh, is for a GitHub issue where we were talking about like what are some of the settings um, that you want to have when you're installing the software. Um, and so um, we, we can see that the screenshot has changed. Um, uh, so I need to read it a bit more carefully. Okay, I think we want the third option. Just, let me just quickly check in this stuff. Yeah. So I think we, we want the third option, the one that adds it to the path. I mean, both the second option and the third added to the path. I can see that the third option nowadays also um, overrides some um, well, the recommended option, uh, the second option now does enough, but I'll, I'll do the third one. Um, then it says like, hey, what open SSH do you want to use? We're going to use uh, the bundle one. Um, that option did not exist in the past. Um, the, the use external open SSH. Um, cool. Now, this option over here says like, hey, the, how do you want to download your files when you're using Git? So Windows has this annoying thing where text files on Windows have a different line ending called CRLF. Uh, it's normally hidden by text editor, so you don't see it. Um, but it uses a different like way of encoding that line ending than uh, Unix uh, machines do. Um, and so the cluster that we're going to be working on is a you know Unix uh, cluster. Um, so the best thing is um, uh, uh, to make sure that like all everything we commit is on Unix style uh, line endings. And uh, I want to say check out as is. So. Um, um, so. Um, this is like if you're downloading a file and the file was created on the cluster and it has a Unix-like line ending, it's going to um, keep that line ending. And most editors, text editors, can handle that nowadays. Um, but it is also going to make sure that if you create a new file, it's going to have that um, um, uh, Linux line ending. Uh, cool. A um, bunch of other options. Um, all right. There's more options than there used to be in the past, but I think I got them all right. Um, and so, um, in the meantime, while that is installing, let's download our studio. Um, so actually, before we download R, we, well, actually, our students are going to remind us that we need to download R. Um, so it says, hey, please download and install R. We're going to do that from CRAN first. So we're going to go to download R for Windows. And it says here, like, this is what you want to sell R for the first time. So that's actually what we want. Um, and we're going to download R for, uh, for this version of Windows. Um, so I'm going to open that file, that installer file. Um, and 
It says, hey, what language do you want to install R? I'm going to choose English. Um, and we're just going to install it on this location. Uh, on Windows, this is where you could be like, hey, I actually want to name this um, R4.3.3, like, let's say, BIOS C318. Uh, if you want to have multiple versions of R. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave it with the default name. Um, um, oh, we're installing R. I don't think we need a desktop um, shortcut. Everything else will do. Um, and so while that is installing, we're going to download um, R, R Studio. Um, so, um, uh, the, I can see the download uh, Pi being completed. Cool. Um, now that I'm finished, we can um, uh, install R Studio. Um, so we'll say next to that. Um, that's pretty easy. It's going to install in the background. Um, I'm going to return to the um, Git setup. I'm going to say, uh, I don't need to see the release notes, but I do want to launch the Git bash window. Um, and so here we have a little terminal window. Um, 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 which is pretty nice. Um, now, we're not really going to be using Git Bash um, too much, like, like directly. Uh, we're going to actually be using it through our studio most of the time. Uh, but first, we need to finish installing our studio. Now, um, um, uh, so, I think it's done installing. Let me uh, try to open it. Um, nope. um, sorry, that was happening on a different screen. Um, so since I'm opening our studio for the first time, it says like, hey, uh, you need to select what version of R you want to use. Um, and since we already installed R, uh, we're going to let's just uh, be like, hey, do you want to use what version of it, or do you want to choose a specific version? Um, so right now we're going to use the default 64-bit version of R, which is the one that can handle like um, larger vectors and things like that. Um, but if we had multiple versions of R, we could change it here. Um, we only have one right now, so we, we're going to use um, the default. Um, 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 so now we have our studio here, and we're going to go to Tools, Global Options, on their terminal. You see now it says, like, new terminals open with Git Bash, right? Um, so that's, that's the software we just installed on the side. Uh, for Git, it's um, using the Git version we just installed, too. Um, um, so if we go to tools, terminal, new terminal, this terminal is actually a git bash um, terminal um, that we just installed on the side. Um, right. So we're getting there. We have a few things installed. Um, but now we need to access the, the cluster. And so we could do it um, with um, commands, but um, the easiest thing is to uh, use a graphical interface. And one of them for access to the cluster and Windows is called WinSCP. So we're going to download WinSCP. Um, there's an advertisement. Download. Uh, it seems like an ad. Okay. I think if I had clicked download, it was going to download something else, <laughs> not WinSCP. Uh, so yeah, WinSCP just downloaded. 
Um, and so it says like, hey, do you want to install it for all users, which is recommended or only for me? I always install everything for all users, um, um, unless I have a very specific reason not to. Um, so we get a little window over here. says so like, hey, please accept the license. We will. We'll do a typical installation. Um, uh, So uh, we'll just launch it. Um, and um, Windows CP is like, hey, um, I want to log into something. Uh, what do you want me to log in? And it's just, it's, by default, it says like, uh, what protocol is using SFTP, which is the one we want, I think. I haven't, looked, I haven't, I should have looked at my Windows machine recently. I think that's what we want. Um, and so the host name now is jspc03.jhsph.edu. If you look at the files from 2020, uh, it used to be jspc01, uh, but that has changed in the last few months. Um, and then we'll need uh, our username, which in this case is um, Stephanie's username at the cluster. Uh, and um, mm, let's try logging in without saving the password. So we can avoid maybe this should be had on, on uh, yeah, uh, the issues we had on the Windows setup last week. I don't want to save any passwords uh, on any like, like, what was it? What does it call the Mac? Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. keychain stuff. <laughs> uh, or the equivalent for Windows. And so since this is the first time we're logging in, it's asking us for our uh, GHPC password as, as well as a code that we get from our Google Authenticator app. And you can notice this, this would be a bit annoying to type every single time, right? Um, uh, so let's create something called an SSH key. Um, and so for that, we're going to go to the first link that we have from the 2020 documentation, uh, which takes us to the um, uh, JHPC website, where under knowledge base authentication, there is this uh, SSH key pair. And so the, here it says, like, hey, just type this command um, on your terminal window. And since we have git bash install, we can um, type it there. Now, um, control V doesn't work, so you need to right click and paste because the keyboard shortcut for pasting is shift plus insert, which is annoying to remember. Uh, apparently they didn't want to do it uh, because I, I had already tried to paste things. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to type it. <laughs> uh, so we're going to create our um, key pair. And so we see here, like on Windows, it's doing it on our home, which in this case is the C disk under users. Um, uh, Stephanie's Windows username is stephanie.page. And it creates the SSH, the hidden SSH directory, and then ID RSA. Um, so that will be the default. Normally, we don't have any keys, so we'll say yes to that. Um, and the way we say yes is just by pressing enter. And it says, like, hey, do you want a passphrase? No. And then um, now we go. Um, so we look at uh, our home. We have a message directory, and there we have two files, ID RSA and then ID RSA.pub. Like I was saying on the, on the Mac setup last week, one of them is a description of who you are, and then another one is a painting of how you look. Um, and so we're going to copy the painting of how you look, uh, which is the public file, to the cluster. Um, 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 and so that way, um, we'll try to log into the cluster and be like, hey, uh, this is who I am. And then the painting will be like, oh, yes, that matches. Um, you're allowed to log in. 
Um, and so we need to copy the contents of this pub file into the cluster. Um, so we could, we could do it with all of this, this command over here, uh, updating a little bit, a few things. Um, but then we'll need to type our passwords and all of that. So since we have um, uh, Notepad++ available, let's just open. Um, we need to go um, to our home which will be C, users, Stephanie Page, SSH, and which of them is the public file? Um, C view. Um, I think it's the one that I'm Microsoft gonna... has determined is a publisher file because it's .pb. Yeah, yeah. It's Thank like you. Microsoft creates its own yeah. idea of what that should be. Awesome, yeah. And so here, unlike what we did with the Mac setup, which we didn't have something like Notepad++ open, Notepad++ does recognize that all of this information is a single line. So it'll be easy for us to copy. Um, uh, so I'll select everything, copy it. And then on WinSCP, uh, we need to be able to see our hidden files. Um, so um, we're just going to go there. Uh, Here it is. Um, well, so now we can see the hidden files on the cluster. We can see the, the SSH um, directory, and there's a file called authorized keys. So I'm going to right click on it, and we're going to edit it, and we're going to edit it with um, a different program. We're going to browse and find. Um, I'll see the end for Notepad. There's like two program files. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and so we're going to remember this editor so we don't have to do this in the future. Um, cool. Um, and so what we need to do is at the end, um, just gonna paste our new key. Okay. Um, and so eh, I close it, but um, what WinSCP was doing, oh, we need a, we need a verification code from the cluster. Thank you. Uh, what, um, oh, was this to log in again? <laughs> And a new code. Um, so what WinSCP does behind the scenes when we say edit with, um, like right click edit with, um, um, Notepad plus plus, is that it, it copies it to uh, a temporal location in our computer. We can see that because at the top it says user Stephanie page, then update a local temp, which is where like all your Windows temporary files are. And it creates like this um, random number. And then inside of it, it recreates the full path at JSPC, which is users as page SSH authorized keys. Um, and so uh, um, this is a nice way of, of um, basically WinSCP downloads the file to our computer, we edit it, once we click save, then it uploads it again to, to the cluster. Um, okay. So now that we have that, uh, what we need next is a new file. 
uh, and in this new file, we're gonna paste um, the contents that we have over here about um, um, how we wanna access the cluster. And so uh, line number one defines a few shortcuts you can call a JSPC. You can have more than one. Here we have a shortcut called J, and I'm gonna call JHPCs um, completely. The username was S page, and then we need to update the host name to tree. Um, and so we're gonna save this file uh, under our, um, like, let me start from scratch, um, uh, like on the C disk, users, our current user, which is Stephanie Page, the uh, .ssh directory, and this file we're gonna call it config. Um, um, is there a way of saving it without a, without an extension? Okay. No, we don't want to expand an extension. Okay. No. Okay. You renamed it to something called Swift. Um, I'm going to use a terminal window here. Uh, just rename it. So now that we have that, let's uh, open a new window. Grows. Um, okay, now I did open it. Um, I don't know why it was taking a while to think. So now we can type SSHJ. And since it's the first time that we're logging in, it says, like, hey, do you actually want to log into this computer? We'll say yes to that. Uh, so that computer is a cluster. Um, and now it actually used our. Um, um, SSH key. Uh, so now we're, we're able to log in um, nicely. Um, now um, we're getting close, but there's a few things we're missing. One of them is called XMing. Um, and that's because now that we're able to log into the cluster, we're typing our password. We actually want to be able to we make a plot on R, we want to be able to see it. Um, so we're going to download uh, XMeme over here. Um, uh, so this is going to download start shortly. Oh, pretty fast. We're going to open it and install XMeme. Um, oh, a lot of that is like default. Um, sorry. I went too fast. Uh, this one also comes with a, this mean also installs a PuTTY, which is a different uh, terminal um, uh, interface than Git Bash. Um, uh, we don't want to create a desktop item um, um, or anything else. We're gonna just install it and uh, let's, let's launch it. Um, since it's the first time we're launching it, Windows is like, hey, do you really want to launch it? Or like, you want to give it all these permissions? We're going to say yes. Um, cool. So now that we have that, let's go to our, our studio. Um, and let's give it a try. So let's log into the cluster. And, um, you don't have the up arrow, okay. Um, we had this also uh, on the Mac setup last week, which is um, uh, there's, um, there's a specific command now with uh, Slurm to actually get a cluster. So I'm looking at a different computer to remember what's the, what's the syntax. So it's S run. Then we need to specify the memory per CPU we want. So 
we don't need much. Um, uh, we do want to specify that we want X11 to work. That way we'll be able to see plots. Um, so there's, there's quite a complicated syntax there. Um, and now we're getting a, a compute node. Um, okay. Um, it looks like um, Stephanie had to use the plus in a while. So she has some configuration files that are like maybe two or years old. That's uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So we're going to load uh, um, uh, the current version of R. Uh, I got a bunch of errors. Oh, much uh, I forgot them. Yeah. Thank you. It's like I'm missing a keyboard. Okay. Uh, so now we have that. We can open R. Um, um, I guess you don't have really nice. yeah. so, well, we don't have anything. Right? We yeah. have no Windows, there are no R packages installed. Uh, well, uh, the default version, uh, the cluster has a bunch of packages installed, uh, but like this one is a GitHub package, so it doesn't install it. Um, so I'm just, um, uh, color out is just a nice package to make sure that uh, we see errors in with colors. Um, uh, So if I quit R, open R again. Now it does um, load color up. So we have an error, like let's say, like that, it'll show up in red. Cool, so, but the thing I wanted to test was like whether we can actually uh, see plots. Um, we couldn't. Uh, okay. Uh, do I need to start X mean first? Maybe it, I think we opened it already, though. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I did open it. Okay. Um, let me try this again with a new, completely new terminal window. Um, just look out from the cluster on the other ones. Um, for some reason, it takes a while to open a new terminal window. I'm not sure why. Um, okay. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna like specify some options for our studio, which I've done. Uh, we also did this on the Mac setup, which is uh, we never wanna restore our data and we never wanna save it. Um, that will improve reproducibility of our code um, and avoid some annoying errors. We've talked about this on um, a presentation by uh, Jenny Bryan, a keynote at the R Studio conference. Um, then, um, since we write a lot of bioconductor code, we're going to use some settings that are more bioconductor friendly, like four spaces for a tab. Um, we'll soft wrap our source files. I'm not going to vertically align, uh, and I'm not auto automatically auditing that. Um, then, on the display, I definitely want to highlight our functions, and I love the rainbows parentheses, make it easier to to see matching parentheses. Um, Sounds nice, I like that. Yeah, cool. So, <laughs> yeah, so now the terminal did open. So let's uh, log into the cluster. Um, let's uh, um, we get a warning here, not off data. Uh, gives me fake X11 data from forward. Okay, let's see if it actually works. Uh -oh. Okay. 
hey, it's not working. Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure why, because on our um, config file, we did specify that we want to enable X11 over here. We have X main installed. Um, um, so we'll have to debug that at, at a later time. But normally at this point, you could open R. Um, now, since I noticed that Stephanie has a few configuration files that are a bit outdated uh, on the cluster, let's uh, update some of them. So um, through WinSCP, um, she has a file called here bash rc, uh, dot bash rc. So we're going to edit that file. Um, we built that plus plus. And so we get this long thing over here. Um, and uh, in contrast to 2020, now um, on the team documentation website, um, uh, we have some JSPC config files, including the bash or C. Now, I know that uh, as, uh, we need to update some things here um, um, now that we're using Slurm, but um, this will be a bit easier. Um, just checking what you have for it. Um, completely replace everything. Just delete it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, cool. um, so that's one of the files we have on the cluster. Um, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie already had on the cluster the, this input um, RC file, which is the one that modifies it up and that error behavior. That's why when I logged in again to the cluster uh, on the terminal window, I was able to just type like s run up arrow and then find the whole syntax, or like just module up arrow and find the whole syntax of the command I wanted to run. Um, so just to showcase that how this impacts everything, uh, um, we're going back to our machine logging into the cluster again. Um, um, we'll request a compute node. And now we don't get all those warnings that we were getting before. Um, um, uh, well, good stuck. Uh, There's a warning here um, about our mate. Uh, um, but in general, everything is working. Um, this might not be related to, uh, to Stephanie's configuration files, might be related to something else. Cool. So I think at this point, we have um, RCU gate. Um, we have a lot of things. Uh, we haven't configured anything direct, directly for using R uh, or Git on the actual laptop itself. Um, so um, like one thing we can do is install the package, uh, use this, um, um, uh, which then has functions for editing configuration files. Um, um, so let's say we want to edit our git config. Um, this package uses actually finds the correct location on Windows machines for where we need to have this. Um, 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 and so this could be useful. We want to specify what is our username and um, uh, and other things. Um, so uh, like I'm just going to copy this syntax over here. Um, so we're on our studio. Um, and so here you would type your name, which in this case I can type. 
uh, and then your like GitHub email, which I don't know. It's your Libra one. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, that way, we make, if we're using our own com computer to like, like clone a repository, and make changes and stuff, it will know who we are. Um, similarly, like we could edit other things like our 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 profile and other stuff that uh if we look at the documentation website we have a lot of like other things for our setup right like you have um um our config files so you want to edit your r profile on your windows machine right so let's for example say we want to have these parts for like editing colors also on um on our our laptop so we'll say like edit r Sorry, on our laptop, uh, we'll use use this edit our profile, and then I'll paste this information. Um, we do need to install uh, follow up follow out on this computer. Um, oh, but we haven't installed remotes. I did the same error last week. Um, and so um, on the documentation website, we have a lot of information about, uh, you know, our setup, and install a bunch of packages uh, that you might want to have. Now, something that we haven't installed uh, for this Windows machine is um, what's called the R tools, uh, which allows us to um, compile our packages from default on, um, on Windows. And so I'm going to install the version that is for, uh, that matches our R version, which is R 4.3.3. So I'm going to install R tools 4.3 right now. Um, uh, so we're going to download that. Um, that way, in the future, we need to compile anything um, on our computer, like any R package. Uh, we'll be able to do that. Um, so, uh, normally for, for a regular user, we don't need all of that. What we do need is on Windows CP to, uh, 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 specify that we want to be able to use, um, um, uh, our, um, SSH key file for logging in. And so I don't remember how do you have your bookmarks. So I guess it's called a site. So we're going to make one over here where they're saying there's PCE 03. It was like the down carrot next to login. Or uh, save. next to save. Yeah, set defaults. So we're going to click advance. Uh, uh, and SSH key exchange uh, or authentication, I believe. And then we're going to specify yeah. what key we want to use, which we need to go to our C disk users, Stephanie page, dot SSH. Uh, and Uh, I'll say yes. It's going to convert the format of it to like a format that Windows can use. Click OK and we'll save it. Um, so you can specify a particular directory. We don't want to have one for now. And we're going to call this like Chase PC. Uh, oh. Cool. Um, okay, so now we're logged in to our home directory. Um, and you could you could have more of them if you wanna, if you're always accessing a specific directory or stuff, right? So let's say you're, um, um, uh, let's say one that you're using frequently is ECSO4, Libre, our main page. 
And so you could, you could bookmark it if you want to over here, add path bookmarks. Um, if you're always accessing that one. Um, so now we have it over here on the side bookmarks. Uh, cool. So like, you, you know, any directory that you use a lot and you don't want to always navigate to it, um, you can save it that way. Um, um, so, um, what else was I doing? I guess I can do with the, oh, the transfer node, like logging into the transfer node as well as the... As a class, yeah, I was installing Arc tools. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was I was downloading the installer for it. Um, uh, so over here, it was like, hey, do you, where do you want to install it? Uh, the website um, tries to highlight and emphasize that please don't change the file path for it. Uh, unless you really know what you want to do. Um, so you can mess things up later. So we're installing our tools. Um, this will allow us to compile packages. See, we need to, if there are no binaries available, which sometimes can happen. <laughs> Stephanie's like, well, do I need this? <laughs> right. I don't need this. But yeah, you know, but maybe- but Somebody I'll... else might need this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now here we logged into, um, um, uh, oh, 